Alrighty, so I guess the first thing is let's start with your like your background. So how did you get into cheats? What did you do? Like, are you a cheater yourself? Do you just make cheats, et cetera, et cetera? Like kind of give us like an idea of who you are, how you got into this and just your background in general. Right. So how I got into it at uh, first, uh, I think it was on Counter-Strike Source. Um, I was playing on servers and there was this guy rage hacking. Mm -hmm. Um just racking up loads of points on the server. Yeah. Uh, so I thought, oh, I want to get, I want to do that. Uh, <laughs> so then I went on, on Google and just Googled Counter Strike Source cheats. Uh, found my first one uh, and installed it. It was in like an hour of installing it. I figured out how to inject it because I didn't have a clue how to do any of that. I had to like Google a tutorial. Um, and then and within about two days, I got banned. <laughs> so then, like the reality hit me that most people don't actually end up lasting with these sort of cheats. Um, and then, say, when it gets back to when it gets to coding, I've been coding for like ages since I was well younger, but properly doing it when it comes to cheats uh, it was probably like four years ago, I think, four or five. Uh -huh. um, that. Uh, so yeah, I started, which most people don't shouldn't start with C++ and C, because it's one of the most difficult languages ever um, to start off with, um, or even in general. Uh, but I did anyway. Uh, it took me a year or so to get the basics down, uh, and I was just making like general cheats for, like CSGO and stuff like that, because I couldn't really touch anything with a proper anti-cheat, because it's kernel. And I, I don't, at the time, I didn't really know much about it. Uh, so I was just mucking about with ESP. Um, and like what um aimbot and stuff like that okay uh, and then about last year or the year before it was mainly like in covid uh i started spending most time learning how to do it all so i started writing a a kernel driver uh for battle Eye games i was at the time i think i was messing around with daisy or arma 3 um mm getting quite a few bands so i started having to move over to free games uh, there was a game called apb reloaded that was battle eye but like an older version of battle eye um and my mate at the time had a spoofer that worked so i just used accounts cheated on it um made sure my, my cheat wasn't detected but at the time it was because i was just learning how to do it um so i was getting banned within like an hour or so of using it and i just used a spoofer and created a new account um <laughs> And then it got to the point where I was just, uh, I was able to keep it up and uh, not get banned um, just on my own. I wasn't selling it at that point. Uh, I, um, why I cheated was because of the fact that it was just it was fun to cheat in general, um, like hitting and constant headshot stuff like that. I think most people will be able to reason and see why that's fun. <laughs> yeah, like hitting constant headshots. I think people can understand how it's fun, but I think where the disconnect begins is after you're cheating for like a certain amount of time, like that fun factor has got to go down after a while. Like how many times have you walking into a map and just killing everybody in like three seconds? Like how many times can you do that before that fun factor like actually disappears? Yeah, that is true. Um, most of the time whenever I'm working on something new or when I was working on a new feature or I used a friend's cheat and now it was like new and I was like oh this is awesome uh, I'd run into a map and then kill everyone um, and that would get boring after like a few matches so that's why closet cheating is so prevalent Okay. because it adds an aspect of fun um, so some cheats have features where the ESP only shows when you can actually visibly see them so it's still an assistance and you can still see how much health they are and stuff like that but you're not seeing them through walls, but then you still look at aimbot and stuff like that. Uh, but it's usually a smooth aimbot um, or silent aimbot, depending on the game. Silent aimbot is where you don't have to be aiming at them to uh, for the bullets to hit. Uh, smooth aimbot is just like a normal aimbot, but it aims at them slowly or more slower to make it look more realistic. Um, okay. And that's why most people tend to closet cheat because then their accounts last as well. We don't get banned quite often uh, quite often because if you're rage cheating you're having everyone reporting you aren't you so you're gonna end up getting banned quicker yeah that makes sense so would you say that the lockdown like I, I understand you mentioned it previously that you had more time during the lockdown and for that reason you got more heavily into cheats do you think that that 
after the lockdown that really kind of propelled the cheating community to be a lot bigger than it would have otherwise been? Mm, and not really, because people are just going to cheat anyway. Cheating has been around for years, since like the early 2000s, and it's just been growing ever since then. Um, I, uh, I wasn't in it up until like the counter strike source like i mentioned um i did buy um before i f properly got a computer uh like the one that was half decent um i got an xbox rgh um it's like a modded xbox 360 mm -hmm. uh and then i was just modded, messing around with that and cheating on games like black ops 2 and stuff um gotcha. so that's where i spent most of my time but yeah, wait, lockdown, I, I just think more people cheated probably because they were at home. It didn't really propel anything further. Right. Maybe propelled it further when it comes to how many cheaters you found in a match because obviously there's going to be more cheaters and people learning. It gives people more time to learn so then it, more people developing cheats. But yeah. oh, I do tend to see a lot of people dropping off or giving up because of how hard it can get. It's not easy. Most Most people... Or most people try and fake it. Most paid cheats that you see now are just people stealing sources and like copy pasting stuff together, and then it gets detected within a week, and then they exit scam and take all the money with them. So that's why most public cheats that you'll see for like five quid a day will get banned uh, and really quick. And then when you try and use them, you just get banned straight away. That's interesting. So I want to know. Have you, like, do you know anyone that is coding cheats for Siege or anyone specifically that is involved heavily within the Siege cheating scene that you know of? And are you able to give any insights on, you know, potentially what Ubisoft could do to help the cheating problem? Because as I'm sure you know, like, Siege is notorious for having an awful, awful cheating problem. And one of the main questions that people were wanting me to ask you is just, what do you, what are your thoughts as someone who makes cheats? What are your thoughts on how Ubisoft could maybe stop the cheating problem, or at least I guess not stop it, but slow it down? And to add on to that, I suppose as well, would you consider, you know, going to the light side in a sense and helping them actually stop or slow down these cheats? Um, right. So I'll start off with how I cheating in general in siege and if i know people who cheat in siege uh, i'll cheat developers and I go back to like last year i was working for a reseller uh, who was selling a big cheat um caught i can't give a name can i because i don't want to be promoting it but he uh was making around like, himself on his own because we split it percentage wise uh so like the by the end of it, his profit that he took away, which was the largest amount, uh, I won't say anyone else's amount or mine, but his, because it was the highest, I'm pretty sure he took away $127,000 or something by the end of the year wow. um, before uh, the cheat stopped working and they weren't updating it. Uh, they have recently started updating it again, probably because of the amount of money that's in it. Why wouldn't you want to carry that on? But right, so I think... Continue on, you're oh, good. Uh, uh, Fairly recently, because of Siege in general just dying, like dying down a bit and not having as many players. Because even I, I played Siege legit for oh, well, six years, five years. Uh, I don't know how long, how long has it been out? I got it on Xbox One at first, so I've been playing it for a while. Um, so I, I do understand where even I, as a cheat developer and someone that cheats, get aggravated and get annoyed when I come across a cheater in a game. It sounds stupid. <laughs> no, <laughs> like, I mean, like it makes else sense. Would. It makes sense. Nobody wants to play against a cheater. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not, not even fun the unless you're using it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I usually try and just uh, make up co a conversation with the other cheater and try and see what they're using and say, oh, I know that, and try and befriend them, but it never works. <laughs> My rank always ends up going down. Um, but yeah. Uh, when it comes to like how much people make because i saw that being asked quite a lot um it depends on the cheat and how much sign up for so say if it's a public cheat that loads of people are using there'll be it'll be priced around five dollars a day fifteen dollars a week uh and then like thirty dollars a month i don't i don't like thirty to fifty dollars a month if for like a big public cheat um and they will probably be detected quite often. Um, and then they'll find a patch for the trying to get around Battle Eye. Uh, and then they'll sell, they'll start selling that again and they'll get 
you know, ban waves and then most of the time they exit scam, take all the money with them. Uh, but they can make around fifty thousand dollars in the lifetime of the cheat because it's around like twenty five thousand to fifteen thousand uh, a month that they're making, but they only ever last one to three months uh, because of how many people are using it. It gets detected because Battle Eyes placed a signature on it of people like, uh, what's his name in the community that does Valorant stuff, Donny, uh, Gamer Doc. He, uh, I've heard of him downloading launches and stuff and sign- uh, signature in it and sending that off to Vanguard when it comes to Valorant. Uh, Siege, I think the way they could improve it is not using Battle Eye because Battle Eye is god awful. It is the were like it's not the worst. You've got stuff like Ricochet and EQ8 for um like COD and Splitgate. Those are the two anti-cheats for them games. Colonel Anti Cheat, they're all god awful. And then it'd probably go to Battle Eye afterwards. That is usually not a good anti cheat because it's a very whenever they find a way to fix things, it's usually like a, a what people would call like a band-aid solution they or they'd fix one thing and then break another <laughs> so then they they open up more vulnerabilities than they're wanting to fix uh because from what i've seen it's like they don't really they're not really that bothered about the game itself they're more bothered about getting the bag um and as i see as I've seen in one of those screenshots uh, i knew a guy that his friend ratted bastion suitor uh, the CEO, or someone that works for Battle Eye, but he says Bastion Suter, I, I, I doubt that, to be fair. Uh, but ratted someone and ended up getting the software that they use to detect cheats. Um, and now my mate's cheat is internal and literally can't detect it. It runs with Battle Eye uh, on. Um, and you can even open cheat engine and stuff, with, like really blatant software and still not get banned. Wow. So um, at that point, you just have to get manually banned. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Uh, I've seen him in quite a few YouTube videos as well. In the, uh, sorry, I'm in a video that he linked me of this guy uh, who does um, reviews of games to find closet cheaters. And he was blatantly cheating, um, like picking up the enemy drones and stuff like that. Um, I thought that was pretty funny. Yeah. Um, there was another cheat that I'm obviously not going to name, uh, but it's dead by now anyway. No, it. No one sells it and because it's been uh, dead for a while. Uh, that used Fair Fight, the actual reporting system in Siege, uh, against the game itself. So say if you were banned on Siege through uh, Fair Fight, which is like the manual banning system, they could unban themselves and then continue playing with a banned account. Um, so Fair Fight had a few issues there, but I think they fixed that uh, by now. But yeah, I'd say Battle Eye is the main reason. They'd probably be better off switching to uh, Easy Hands Cheat um, because Rust Rust uses the best version of Easy Hands Cheat and that has the least amount of cheaters. I mean, it has quite a few cheaters because of how popular the game is, but it's hard to make cheats for. I mean, if you know what you're doing, you can still make cheats, but so if someone's trying to come along and piece something together, they'll end up not succeeding and they won't be able to sell it for long. Yeah, it seems like the goal when trying to like slow down these cheats is just to make them more expensive so that more people can obtain them. And I think the way you do that is sort of what you were just saying, just make their make the the cheat developers lives as difficult as possible, use the best anti cheat and make sure that they have to actually put in a fair amount of work and, you know, they're going to price their product accordingly. So I think that's probably one of the best ways to slow down the cheats is just trying to make it more difficult to actually manufacture them but yep. with, with all that said so i know you, you were talking about obviously a lot of these cheat developers make a lot of money and you don't have to disclose any specific figures of your own if you don't like to but i'm just interested in knowing is like is this your main job like you got into this for fun initially obviously there's some good money involved in it so did it kind of go from something that you started for fun and now you're kind of doing it maybe full time or like as your job um i haven't sold anything in a very long time because of the big risk if you don't know what you're doing there's a very large risk of fraud um and people coming after you and trying to dox you i've had quite a few people trying to dox me but I'm, i know how to protect myself when it comes to that so uh i've took you know hopefully no one knows where i live but people have tried before and people have targeted me 
Um, no one's had my Discord account banned before, even though people have tried. Uh, it's just not a nasty. It's not just a. It's a, it's a nasty community to be in. Um, if because you can easily make enemies. Um, but so currently, it's not my job. Um, even though if it was, I'd be making a lot of money. But it's very risky. Um, but yeah, when when I when I was doing it, I was I wasn't making an amazing amount of months. It wasn't like because I, I usually. Um, I, I didn't sell my own stuff because I always like using my own cheats and not having it detected, of course. Um, but when I was selling other people's stuff, I was obviously taking a percentage, so it's not as much as if I own the cheat. Um, but I was making a decent amount, yeah. That's okay. Good. Awesome. So there's been a lot of like talk about like these machine learning cheats and external hardware cheats, etc. So what's your opinion on those, and how, if at all, would game developers be able to like combat against that um so when it comes to um hardware cheats in the sense of dma devices direct memory access um it it is difficult but for some devices uh anti cheats are able to detect the serial for the device that's plugged in um i'm don't quote me on it but i'm pretty sure there was one called PCI Leech. Um, so it connects to a PCI connector um, and then he's able to have access to the memory on your computer and there was a way that they could they anti-cheat detected what was plugged in on your computer and saw the hardware device serial and could ban you off that. But if you knew what you were doing when it came to the hardware on the device, some people spoofed uh, the serial and were able to get away scot-free um, so if you're able to do that, then yeah, it's, ex it's diff basically impossible to detect a direct memory access if you know how to hide it properly. Um, where I I do remember because I made one myself, but it was more of a uh, it was an AI neural network image detection uh, one. So I had a, a Logitech mouse and a Bluetooth dongle, plugged that into a Raspberry Pi, and then I ran the Raspberry Pi through. Uh, something else and then I ran it into my computer and the my computer though so the Raspberry Pi controlled my mouse um because Vanguard, which I was using on Valorant, detected if it was uh, what I was using was I think so at the, at the time I was just proof of concept in it through Python. So if Vanguard detected a mouse moving uh, with an actual mouse with Python, they didn't ban you through that, but because I was running it through the Pi, it sorry it was going from the Pi and didn't bother with it. Um and that was a like an advanced uh, image detection name bot, and that worked really well for ages because on Valorant, you've got coloured outlines for enemies, but then it's neural network as well. So it could detect uh, enemies' uh, faces and stuff. Um, I trained that on like 200, 300 uh, YouTube videos of Valorant gameplay, um, and it worked decently well. Um, there was a guy I was speaking to who trained it on like 2,000 images, uh, 2,000 videos, sorry. Um, and his was like really good. It made it look like an actual cheat uh, the way it was working. It was very well made. Um, so yeah, I think that's that's all I know really when it comes to hardware cheats. All right. So obviously, you had talked before about how there's like a chance you could get involved with fraud. There's obviously we've seen game publishers take legal action before on cheat developers and. Etc. So, have you ever been contacted by, you know, like a game publisher or someone like that, um, where they're threatening legal action, or has that happened to someone you know? And is that is that like a increasing worry in like the community? Because it seems like a lot of game publishers are kind of getting tired of trying to, you know, release the new anti cheat or whatever. And it seems like slowly but surely they're just starting to take more legal action. Um. To be honest, the I think that the game companies aren't taking legal action as much as people are saying they are, um, even though we do see it, but not as often. Um, it's more of a myth, really, like the you know taking them on like legally. But to be honest, most cheat developers, like I had a mate who set up his uh, cheat under a uh, company in like Prague or something. I can't remember where, but he was in the US. So they couldn't really take any legal action because that was under like Prague law. 
Um, so the, and the company was uh, I can't remember where it was from, but say if it was Ubisoft, it'd be French, won it, and they can't really be doing. Uh, they can't really interact with that. They can just ask them or send them an email or say that they'll threaten legal action. And then what would happen is they take the cheat down and then pop up under a different name somewhere else, and there's nothing they can do about it. Um, I do, and when it comes to do taking uh, legal action, um, it only ever happens to massive uh, cheat providers that are selling like thousands of product keys a month. Um, lower, like lower known, like lesser known, sorry, uh, cheats don't really get targeted by it because why would Ubisoft or whatever waste money and time on a small cheat provider that's not that much of a threat? Right. That's very interesting. Yeah, I never actually thought that that could be like a myth that was going around. So it's, it's definitely nice. It's, this is why it's important, I feel like, to get different perspectives. So that's why I agreed to, to have this call with you. But another question I have, and this was a, a pretty popular one as well. I saw a few different people asking this one. And that's if you know of any professional players, either now or previously, whether it's Siege or a different game. Like, have you ever seen professional players engaging in like cheats before uh the only other other like the only t- other time where i've seen that happen which was like, extremely popular was that indian csgo player with his word.exe yeah that's uh, what cheat. i thought of too yeah um but no not really I, it would be extremely difficult for them to get away with it on lan um but that's only when it comes to LAN because the actual LAN provider have, you know, a full uh, look over all the systems, know, knows what's plugged into them. Like that Indian guy, he was already flagged by the time he plugged his USB device into the computer. Really? Um, okay. But, yeah. Um, I, I don't think they'd actually use anything like that at LAN. Maybe the most they'd do, maybe a macro, but I, I heavily doubt that. Um, but if they, are, if, if they are, I don't imagine them using anything higher than that. Um, but they, I, I will say that quite a few pros are probably cheating when it doesn't come to land. That's why you'll see pros mysteriously underperforming uh, constantly in lands, and they'll just play, blame it on stress or something. Um, and another one, when it comes to, because uh, I, I think Fortnite do cash cups, don't they? Um, I'm not sure, I to know. be honest. Yeah, they do, I'm pretty sure they do cash cups for like the general community so then they can get into bigger tournaments. And I know quite a few people that have used their own cheats that they've made in those cash cups just to make some money. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I would never say they actually used them at an event at a LAN because the cheat, anti-cheat at the LAN is way more invasive than a normal kernel anti-cheat that you'd have installed on your computer. Right. So possibly you could have a few cheaters, maybe macroing or or uh, a few pro players macroing or cheating online, but highly unlucky or unlikely on LAN, which I think most people kind of expected. Like, cheating at LAN is, is notoriously difficult. But the other question I had for yeah. you is, if you if you feel, like, any regret for, like, making cheats or cheating yourself, like, do you, do you feel any regret for, I don't know, a lot of people have the view that cheaters kill the game. I kind of have that view. So do you kind of, do you feel any regret that maybe you've helped kill some games or just help the decline of some games? I wouldn't I wouldn't say that cheating kills games. I'd, I'd honestly say it probably puts more money into the game when it comes to people buying new accounts because then it funds the company even more when they're having to buy another account when they're getting banned. Um, I wouldn't say I feel bad because it's it's just a natural thing. It's going to happen anyway. If I'm not doing it, someone else will be. So I personally don't feel bad. I, I can see where all the hate comes from because, like I said, I've I've been in I've been in matches where I've come across cheating and I got really annoyed because you know I'm sat there in diamond. I'm gonna end up back in plat <laughs> yeah. losing a match. Um, but yeah, oh, oh, I don't I, I don't think anyone in the cheating scene feels bad for what doing what they're doing. And I can see why because if they're not, if they're not cheating, someone else will be. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. I think that's a good uh, analogy there. Well, that's that's basically all the questions I had. I, I'm not sure if there's any like last little comments you want to make. Anything else you want to say just before we wrap this up? Uh, yeah. One one thing I will say that's repeated in loads of other videos: you will end up getting banned unless you are making it yourself. And quite a few people that cheat on games aren't making it themselves. So if you cheat, you will end up getting banned at some point because you're buying someone else's 
probably pasted cheat and they don't know how to make it properly. Interesting. Alrighty then. All right. Well, I, I really appreciate your time. Thank you for reaching out to me. And uh, yeah, that's all. Yeah, no problem.